So I guess I can start in the middle. I'm going to talk about uh, some recent work that I've been doing relating proof complexity to TFNP. Okay. So people who went to the boot camp has probably seen Susanna's talk, and Susanna introduced a little bit about this. So you can think about this as just kind of deepening her deepening what she was talking about a little bit more. Um, so okay, so let's first remember what TFNP is. Okay, so in the classical theory, let's let RXY be some uh, just some NP search, some NP relation. Okay, so this means that it's polynomial time computable and it's also polynomial time bounded, right? So, uh, so given X and Y, I can compute R in polynomial time. And if there's any certificate for a given X, there's actually a certificate that's pretty short, it's polynomially bounded, right? So given such a thing, we can we get a natural search problem, right? If we're given some X, the goal is to find a Y such that our XY holds, right? Does that make sense? Okay, great. And of course, this is like the standard complete problem for function NP, if you like. You know what I mean? If I, if I take R to be given X is a CNF formula and Y is a satisfying assignment, this is like the complete, that would be like the complete problem for FNP. Okay. So uh, it turns out to be interesting to ask the question about what happens if this relation is total. So by total, I mean for every X, there is a Y such that the relation holds. Okay. So in this case, we're going to call the, we call the class of all such things TFNP, right? This is the class of all total, total polynomially bounded, polynomial time computable relations. Um, and this has been used in complexity theory, as probably everybody here is at least somewhat familiar with, to like classify a lot of different problems that are naturally total. Because a lot of problems in algorithms and complexity are naturally total things. Like a really good example would be something like computing a Nash equilibrium, right? Every bimatrix game has a Nash equilibrium, and so therefore it's natural to ask to you know output a certificate of this. Of course, it doesn't make sense to ask for the verification problem for these things anymore because the answer is always yes, right? If you give me X, I can always just output one. What's really interesting about this is actually the search versions of this of these kinds of problems, right? So okay, so just like uh, just like in classical complexity theory, we can define a bunch of subclasses here. So if this is say TFNP in this original paper where uh, TFNP was introduced, um, there were a bunch of classes introduced. These sort of classical TFNP classes, um, and they all correspond to nice, simple total search problems. So let me just write a few of these down. And what's nice about these subclasses is, it, is that each of them corresponds to like a, uh, a theorem, actually. Usually a, a theorem that, that involves a proof of existence, right? So for instance, the class PLS, you can think of as corresponding to the theorem that uh, every DAG has a sink. So in order to define it formally, we would have some Turing machine that's describing some exponentially large DAG, right? And then you would want to find an actual sync in this, a sync node in this implicitly defined Turing machine. And then we would define PLS to be the class of all such problems that we can, you know, solve by reducing to this single search problem. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. And I guess there will be some syntactic reason why it will be a DAG. Exactly right. Yeah, we'll we'll hard code in the definition that there's that it'll be a DAG. Say every node has some fixed out degree. Um, like usually the way it's done is like we we have, we equip it with some potential. And like we have to, we say that the edge can go forward only if the potential decreases, like we're equipping it with a transit of ordering. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and then maybe just for another example, I mean, P pad down here. This uh, corresponds to a directed version of the handshaking lemma, right? 
So in other words, what this means is that if I have a directed graph and I have some unbalanced node, like it has more in degree than out degree, then there's got to be another unbalanced node with you know, more out degree than in degree, right? And the complexities of these things have been sort of very well studied. So because of this connection with these natural theorems, it's natural to believe that a connection to proof complexity should exist. And indeed there is. In fact, even in one of the original papers, I mean, it was observed that if any TFNP problem is NP hard, this happens if and only if NP equals co-NP, right? So this should, this should suggest that there's a connection to proof complexity. And what I'm gonna talk about and what I'm kind of interested in working on and what I've been working on is really deepening these relationships, okay? So to define the connection to proof complexity, um, it turns out the right thing to do is to talk about black box versions of TFMP. Okay. So Susanna defined this, but let me just uh, let me just sort of quickly go over it again. So all that in order to go from the classical world of TFNP, where everything is defined by an algorithm, what we're going to do instead is we're just going to replace every polynomial time algorithm with an efficient black box algorithm. What is that? Well, that's just a decision tree of polylog depth. Does that make sense? So, place algorithms with polylog depth. Okay. So, I mean, maybe just to give a sort of sort of an example here. Uh, in order to define the like a relation now, you know, we would have say the input is to, is now a decision tree. It's got some n bits. The output is going to be some you know some certificate. And the way that we'll define efficiently certifiable is very simple. For every output, there's a there's an efficient decision tree that you can just check. That'll check if it's the right thing. So for every possible output, there is a decision tree t. That, you know, Rxy holds if and only if Bxy. So it's the correspondence or relation between black box and being a decision tree. You can do a decision query tree. algorithm. Every query algorithm you can model as a decision tree, right? If I have a polynomial time algorithm and it's got an oracle, mm -hmm. well, I can write down queries of size roughly log n, and so I can make polynomial queries to it. That's basically the connection. It doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So now what you can do is you can take all these classes and you can just kind of plug in this decision tree everywhere. Now, the only difference is that all of these problems are now going to be defined by using low depth decision tree reductions instead of low depth polynomial time reductions. Let's not worry about exactly how you define that, but this is just basically how you do the, do the extension. And, and so the definition of decision tree doesn't exclude doing things that are not just queries to the black box, or uh, I don't know. I think that maybe we can just take, take this discussion offline. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not quite following what you're saying. Um, OK, so we can take like the decision tree version of these classes defined by efficient reductions, right? Um, and when you do this, something pretty cool happens. And so, so what happens? Well, every, Susanna, Susanna mentioned this in her talk, but every NP search problem, total search problem like this, we can associate with it a low width, unsatisfiable CNF formula. And what the CNF formula says basically is that this problem is not total, which is of course impossible because it is total, right? So you know I can define this f sub r by you know a big and over all the certificates that you know none of the certificates hold, right? And since this is a low depth decision tree, I can write this as a low width CNF formula. That makes sense. And this right here is the connection between proving and searching in total search problems. Okay. So now TFNP is associated with the set of all bounded with unsatisfiable CNF formulas. And these lower width classes turn out to correspond exactly 
to prove systems, which is kind of the amazing thing. And this is what we've been working on. So let me just, maybe in my last couple minutes, let me just say some of the characterizations and separations we can prove. So um, it's kind of this classical result, and it was even in Susanna's talk that P down here corresponds to tree-like resolution, efficient tree-like resolution proofs. Um, PLS here corresponds to uh, bounded width resolution. So let's say low width resolution proofs. So these results were both known in the literature. They weren't explicitly stated in this way, but if you go through the literature, you can find, you know, they basically had already proved this. Like this wasn't, this sort of wasn't new. Um, our contributions have been to show that these other classes also correspond to really nice proof systems. So for this class PPA, it turns out that this is exactly null Stellan sets over F2, which if you've seen Tony's talk, you'll recognize it as an algebraic proof system. Um, PPAD corresponds to null Stellan sets over the integers. And PPADS corresponds to uh, Shirali Adams, which is like the program from the classical proof system from linear programming, albeit with low coefficients. Okay. Um, and this is only a small fraction of the kinds of things we can use. Um, and maybe one more nice result to mention is um, there was this beautiful result recently by uh, showing an intersection theorem, namely that P pad intersect PLS is a well-defined class. It turns out to be equal to this class CLS. This was by, this was best paper at stock, I believe a couple, like a year or two ago. Um, so we were able to improve this to show that it's actually equal to this end of potential line problem. And our reduction even works in the black box setting. And we can also get the same thing if you put in an S for P pad, you can get sync of potential line, which is the natural sync version. And it turns out that these have nice characterizations as proof systems as well, which is a pretty amazing thing actually. Um, so this sync of potential line problem turns out to be exactly, turns out to correspond to the proof system which comes from MaxSat solving called reversible resolution. And a really, really cool result here is that reversible resolution is somehow exactly the intersection of low width resolution and low coefficient Shirley atoms, which in my opinion is a totally weird result. I've never seen a result like that in complexity before. So in general, something that I'm really interested in working on for the rest of the semester is obviously to continue pushing this. There's a lot of results that I haven't mentioned that we've we have many results in this sort of direction that we haven't mentioned. But in particular, one thing I'm interested in, especially in light of the meta complexity stuff, is to understand strong proof systems, really strong proof systems. Can you somehow understand the complexity of things like Frega or extended Frega or even other kinds of proof systems using this kind of language? Because it seems like once we hit those, that level of complexity, we need more complexity, like standard complexity type assumptions to sort of understand what's going on. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe next speaker, Marshall, can set up while we ask questions. Yeah, Rahul? Yeah, in a paper we just submitted, uh, we characterized ResK, and also we've, we've been able to characterize. Turns out, like, there's, you can take ResK and you can define like a higher depth generalization of Charlie Adams, and we can characterize that as well. And some other things. We in upcoming work we think we can go higher. Oh, but yes, yeah, yes. we're working on that right now. Yes. What is the TFNP? Do you have some uh, corresponding proof system for TFNP? TFNP is literally the set of all bounded with CNF formulas. So they're unsatisfiable CNF formulas. That's this correspondence right here. So that's how you should think of it. It's there's no real proof system for it. I mean, if there was a proof system for it, then P would be and P will come with P, right? So TFNP is like the set of all so, uh, unsatisfied scenes. So PPP, those are below it. That's a great question. PPP is really missing here. This corresponds to the pigeonhole principle. We do not have a proof system for it. 
like a nat like a naturally occurring one that exists in the literature already. If we don't have one, then I'm kind of not sure if there even is one in some sense. So in these, the formula FR, is it always, is the representation important? Is it always a CNF or? Uh, oh. for, for the, because these, so here you talked about which proof systems you refute it in, uh, yeah. but is, does the representation come in somehow? Or? Yeah, it, it, it is important. So I mean, like you can kind of think of this as giving like a theory of reducibility for proof complexity, like that exists in standard complexity. Like what this is saying is that there's some fixed CNF formulas such that you can prove something in the proof system efficiently, if and only if you can reduce your tautology to that formula efficiently. So the representation really does matter, actually. Like the representation tells you kind of what class you're operating in. And that reduction, efficient reduction would also be in some black box. Yeah, with, polylog with, depth decision okay. tree, exactly. So it's like a local efficient reduction, exactly. Maybe you'll take other questions offline. Oh, want a quick question? No. Oh, okay, thanks again. Thanks. Yes.